and that continues to go on. Uh, there was three, they had three people that came out here last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and it consumed most of our time, and they're still training with um, the other three staff throughout the day, off and on, we will probably be going on much of this month. It's going to create a lot of work for us, but we know we knew that coming in that it would create, that initially, the startup, there is always a transition period. And we're going to be um, running 2013 in BIAS as well as already having it in Springbrook to make sure the numbers are sound. So um, I anticipate having that complete hopefully by the end of February. <coughs> Finance committee meeting is tomorrow, tomorrow night, and we have a number of issues to discuss. One of those is should we have the finance committee meetings on the second Tuesday of the month? So we'll take any input we can from council. Um, the payroll, which is on the consent agenda tonight, is the payroll from the third. It's already been paid. I would like to re remove that and put it to next week when we approve the claims. Cause we always keep them together. It got out of, I didn't notice it until it was already on the agenda that it was on there. It's kind of a de facto type of move because I was speaking with the state auditor today and payroll is approved when it's um, the budget is approved. So the auditors don't really look at that. They look at the claims to make sure that they're either approved or they're looked at after the fact. So, and, and I do want to tell the council that I plan on looking at what the ordinance for how payroll and claims are approved in the city because I think there needs to be some tweaks so that when we don't have a meeting for three weeks we can still pay people, you know, because sometimes it puts us up a hardship when that does happen. And it happens about four times a year. So um, I'll be doing that in the coming months. <coughs> uh, the year-end report for, oh, and I wanted to explain about the open period that Dan was talking about. The uh, We're a cash-based city, so when we spend the money is when we expense it, when we receive the money is when we, when we um, put it towards revenue. However, the auditors allow for the last 20, the first 20 days of the following year to be included in the prior year. So we know that the 21st is the next meeting, and even though it's a, it's a, um, it's a, a council workshop, we knew that we wanted to get as many expenses as we could that were 2013 into 2013, and that is why we're waiting until next meeting to do that. <coughs> Finally, uh, I finished November's report and we should have, I'm hopeful to have some numbers through December by the end of January. Those will be draft numbers, so at that point I'll be reviewing them with staff, with the department heads and with, um, with Leanne and the Finance Committee. Hopefully to have the quarterly report and the final yearly report, or annual report done sometime in February before I have to do the report to the office. So, and so smoothly we'll be able to do that. Any questions? Okay, thanks. Were there any questions that you needed to ask? Okay, public safety. Good evening. Uh, to start off with uh, the incident on Friday, you were kindly reminding us. Um, I was not working at the day, but uh, I learned that the device was found here at City Park. Um, it was an improvised device, um, basically sparkled on and all such. And uh, obviously, you know, when officers responded, you know, they sealed up the road, you know, it was not accessible for the public at that time, and, and put away bomb disposal unit was uh, activated. They rolled in, and per their fancy robot, they, uh, they basically disabled the device, basically made it inert. And, uh, much. It's hard to determine when it was placed there, you know, given the fact that, you know, January 1st was right around the corner. Could have been there for days or hours, but thank God it was located and taken care of in the proper way. Because those things are potentially legal. So, um, and then on the monthly report, um, it's December 2013, so we have the totals of the year. At, at the bottom, um, it lists that the Pacific Police Department um, actually generated 1,248 cases. That means that an officer actually um, um, documents that in an official case report. Um, based on the previous numbers of the, the, the numbers of the previous years, it's a little bit less. And when I say a little bit, it, it's a little bit, you know, maybe five percent. And I believe that. It is directly related to the short staffing level we had in the first half of 2013. Uh, we were bare bones, and then, which means that the proactivity is way down, and uh, and that automatically results in less cases being generated on 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 view activity. Um, the 
one officer was sick for the majority of the month, and we had a couple officers, including myself, that was out in training for uh, X number of days. So that that is the reason that it's slightly lower as November, slightly actually, say give, give or take 20 percent. So um, and that's pretty much it. If there are any questions, I'm more than welcome to try to answer those. Related to the uh, bombs, uh -huh. uh, they call them sparkler bombs. Yeah. I understand they're tightly wound, tight, taped up with utilizing the sparkler that you use. So it had to be the lid. Actually, it had a wig. Oh, okay. Okay. it had a wig. Went that mm -hmm. okay. So they were contained in a, looked like a PVC? Or I believe it was actually metal. <coughs> it's hard to tell in the picture. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, when I received the case, again, I wasn't there. It looked like metal, and uh, it's dead on itself with the presentation. Because I drove by that, yeah, about. And then they thought it was an actual pipe bomb. But then when they uh, <coughs> when they took care of business, they determined that it was still the sparklers. But still, it's the same effect because quite a, if you create, you know, in a tight containment um, a device that it needs to ignite and you know, yet it has no way to go. So we have an automatic build up. So. But I'm not a bomb guy, but that's yeah. common sense. <laughs> well, I've got experience with some of the fire department Fourth of July and Lake Mahoe's where we still under heavy construction mm -hmm. several years ago. Kids like to go blow up porta potties. Oh, yeah. They did a pretty good number with just uh, a lot of sparkers. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay. Next slide is public work. Last week, we had quite a few things on the agenda. Some of those things are going to finance this week. Um, all kind of just housekeeping things. Um, we <coughs> have today had some complaints about some uh, local ditches flooding. Um, and I sent the crew out to look at it, and they're finding that our ditches aren't draining because of the height of the river. So if you have anybody that's concerned about it, that's kind of what the problem's been. Um, had the crew out if you run across any potholes. They've been out trying to fill all the potholes as soon as we see them. So if you find any, let me know so I can get them out there. Question. Question related to the river height. I've noticed it is quite high, but we're not. They're not. Are they not? I don't want to say the warning structure. Are they not removing more water, or is it, is it just because of the? The height of the it should be because of the height of the sill. So yeah, it's a sill build up. Okay. So we're looking already at a, a problem with the height correct impacting now without any extra discharge. Correct. <coughs> any other questions? I don't have much to report. Um, it's pretty much business as usual. Christmas is over with. It's kind of settling down a little. We did have a Human Services Committee meeting tonight, and we are going to start the Code of Conduct uh, next week. Start out fresh. Start out. So um, that's what we're going to do. Pretty late. Anybody have any questions, comments? I have a question. Yes. Uh, can you guys determine the date for the citizen appreciation? No. But you said not March 29th, correct? I was thinking like the second week in March, second Saturday in <coughs> March. Okay. I'll let you know tomorrow. I'll be in DC. I think the second week is March. Okay. Well, whatever day works for you, that would be better. Because <laughs> you have to be there. You have to. You have to. Thank not a problem. You guys, thank you. Okay. Any reports from council members? Council member Holsey. Just a brief announcement and 
this decision has been a long time coming. I plan to retire from the council May 1st for health reasons. Uh, I've got a couple of commitments to my wife and family that I need to take care of. None of us have tomorrow. All we have is today. As the Irishman once said, yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery, and today is a gift. And that's why they call it the present. And uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve on this council. I still have a couple projects I'd like to see through before my retirement. On the upside, this gives the city an opportunity to uh, put the notification out, interview for applicants, and unlike most people that leave the council before their term is up, I will then have the opportunity to vote on my replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 